Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Timothy Atik from Vertical Ministries in Waco, and he just brought a great message. Um, starting in Genesis 36, this uh, great overview of um, Esau and some very applicable points for all of us today. Um, I'm thinking, though, for somebody who maybe is not as familiar with the Bible, mm -hmm. um, if you could just kind of give us a little bit of background, a little bit of history, sort of leading up to the point where you started. Just a just an overview. Sure. So uh, Genesis is the book of beginnings. And so uh, there's creation, there's Adam and Eve, there's the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3. Um, there's the flood where God kind of hits the reset button mm -hmm. on creation with Noah. Then there's the Tower of Babel where God kind of scatters, uh, kind of creates the nations. And then in Genesis chapter 12, um, God in his sovereignty chooses a man to, that he is going to basically establish his or orchestrate his plans for mm -hmm. history. He chooses uh, Abraham and he establishes the nation of Israel with Abraham and ultimately it's through Abraham's descendants that we would ultimately get Jesus and how God would, um, all of his plans point to Christ. So he, in Genesis chapter 12, he makes a few promises to Abraham. He promises Abraham to give him a piece of land and he promises to give him a lot of people, a family, uh, really a nation, to live on that land. And then he says, and in you, all the nations will be blessed. Mm. And that's talking about Jesus, that all of the world would have an opportunity to receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ. So that's where we picked up in the sermon that um, Abraham had a son named Isaac, Isaac. Mm -hmm. who had Jacob. Uh, and Esau was Jacob's brother, mm -hmm. Isaac's son. Great. Um, in this message, as you were able to look at um, just some of the mistakes and regrets that in Esau's life that led um, to his future, you were able to apply that to a lot of areas for us, um, just being different from the world in a lot of ways. And one area that you spoke really specifically to was our marriages. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure, um, as you acknowledge today, that there's a variety of marriages and marital situations that were in the audience today. Um, and I can't help thinking about, you know, in the in the hardest parts of marriage, sometimes you ask yourself, did I marry the wrong person? Mm -hmm. Or um, someone there sitting in there today may have been asking themselves that. And you did make a specific point about choosing to love. Can you speak more in into just that piece of marriage? Yeah, well, there's, um, you know, this is where Whereas where God's way and the world's way really kind of go in two totally different directions. Uh, our world paints a picture that marriage is primarily about your happiness, mm -hmm. that that's what it comes down to. And it's, uh, it, it breeds a sense of entitlement that you are entitled to be happy in your marriage and you are entitled to feel in love. And so... One of the reasons I think so many marriages end is because people reach a point where they don't feel like they're getting what they sense they're entitled to. And so they call it quits because they have fallen out of love. And, uh, and God has intended for marriage to really reflect the choice that Jesus made to pursue us when we were at the height of being unlovable sinful people and he sacrificed his life for us. And so um, I think one of the privileges God gives us is to feel in love with our spouse at times. But when you look at scripture, love is so much more of a choice. The, the famous love passage that is quoted at marriages is 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, mm -hmm. it's kind, it says love does not seek its own, it's not jealous. It endures all things. It believes all things. How often do you feel 
patient? Mm -hmm. How often do you feel kind? No, those are, those are intentional choices. So when, when you talk about being in love, I think when you tell someone, hey, when I tell my wife I love you, what I'm saying is I am committing today to be patient and kind, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a choice. And I think um, the feeling in love follows the, the choice to love, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't feel in love just because they've given up on choosing to love long before that. You know, I, I think 1 Corinthians 13 is the stereotypical love passage, but I believe that the greatest passage that God has given us unpacking marital love is really in the Song of Solomon. It's in chapter 8, and it's, it says... Um, Love is as strong as death. It's as jealous as the grave. Um, even a, even um, a flood cannot quench its fire. And the idea there is that it's, it's, a, it's a commitment. When you stand on the altar, you don't even need to know what floods are going to come mm -hmm. from that day until the, until the end. You're, you're basically stepping in and making a decision that my love is as strong as death, meaning that, um, you know, no one died in uh, the, the, uh, the grave. It says that love is as jealous as the grave. Well, the grave doesn't share a body with anyone, if that makes sense. It does. And the idea is that that, that love is, is jealous. It's shared between two people and it's as strong as death, meaning that from today until the end, I'm, I'm going to make a choice. I don't need to see what's going to happen between now and and then because this is this is what I'm committing to. Does right. that make sense? It does. It does. And it's a very um, it's very challenging in marriage. Sure. And I feel like what was great about this message was there were so many different challenges for wherever you are in your walk, whether it's to commit to Christ today or to turn away from whatever in your life is your Esau mm -hmm. decision. So um, I thank you for being back with us today. It's a pleasure to have yeah, you back with us. And um, what a great message. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for joining us here with for Postscript and keep your questions coming. See you next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.